I'd like to introduce Cynthia Fisher um, from um, Big Bang Mosaics, located in Western Massachusetts in uh, Charlemont. And um, she is going to talk to us about a project that she's been working on for several years um, for the city of uh, Tamarack um, in Florida. Um, she's won many awards for her work. Um, she does a lot of public and um, community mosaic art. And uh, we're very pleased that she's joined us this evening. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Amy. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, and I really look forward to seeing everyone in person again. And hopefully, hopefully, that could be the end of this year. Being an eternal optimist, I'd like to think that we'd be able to have our next NEMS annual meeting um, in person. So I have a lot to cover, so I'm going to get right into it. Um, as Amy mentioned, I've been um, doing a project for the city of Tamarack in Florida. And on the calendar, it's been a, uh, about a four year span or three year span, even though the actual work on the mosaic of actually laying tile is a lot um, shorter. But these things do tend to drag on. So now I'm going to do my share screen. Oh, and so I want to say, I encourage you to ask questions and um, feel free to ask as I'm presenting. And, um, and, and I'll ask in chat if you can. Yeah. Okay. So now share screen. Um, huh. Okay. I already did something wrong. Shh, shh, Amy, I'm. Don't worry. I, <laughs> I don't know how to find. Um, uh, if you scroll down to on the bottom of your screen, there should be a share screen. Let me go back out of that again. So, because I have share screen. Okay, there it is. Okay. And there. Is, are you seeing Tamarack Village, everybody? Yes, okay, great. Okay, so I'm um, going to jump right in and tell you about this um, project that I've been working on for um, the city of Tamarack. And as I say there, um, you're gonna hear a little bit of the max and be careful of what you wish for. Um, having a giant project is not necessarily always the greatest thing. So um, I'm gonna start with telling you how I got the commission. Um, I have been working with Beth Ravitz and George Gadsden, who are art consultants in Southern Florida for several years now. And um, these are a few of the projects that I've worked on with them. Um, the one in the right hand side, I did with an artist named Ruben Ubiera, who is from Florida. He did the design of it. It is called Family Connections. And he's a mural artist and he painted the background of that. Um, the mosaic mural. And so I'm sharing that because uh, while he and I were working together, the city of Deerfield Beach asked him if he would um, uh, be interested in making a mosaic for their city of a, for a splash pad. And he had never done a mosaic before. And so since he had been paired with me, he, he asked if I'd be interested in going in on him, in on it with him. And I, of course, had never done a splash pad either, but the two of us figured, well, if we say no, they're just going to find someone else to do it. So let's give it a go. Um, it is a huge mosaic. It's 52, a huge splash pad, 52 feet in diameter. Um, we worked on it in a, a building down in the town of Deerfield Beach, and it was a community project. So people um, were came in and volunteered and spent a lot of time working on it also. Um, and over the course of the year or so, I went down to Florida, I think three or four times and worked for four days or so. Um, we worked on the floor. It was a big building and it had enough space for two pie sections, 26 feet long. Um, but one of the things I learned from working on this project was in, in terms of doing the project again, there was no way I was gonna do something where I had to sit on the floor. Um, 
And since the, 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 I signed the contract for the, um, the Deerfield Beach project in um, 2018 in the fall, but then nothing really got started for a while. So meanwhile, I was asked to do a splash pad for the city of Lauder Hill. And um, this one, the theme was um, urban wildlife. And so here are some installation pictures. The team I worked with, there's family pools and they were fabulous guys. And it was um, great because they didn't mind um, and actually welcomed me to jump right in and work alongside them. Um, so this is the largest one of the, the, the pieces. Uh, this is a great blue heron that's nine feet wide and 15 feet tall. And then here, and then I did, I think seven animals in addition to the, the great blue heron. Um, and they were all pretty large scale. They were, it was really a fun project um, and just making things that large is, was fun. I didn't make it down to the open house, but there are kids enjoying the splash pad. If, if you have heard the, haven't heard the term splash pad, this is a splash pad in action. Um, okay, so bringing me to the current project. So the theme of the project is more metamorphosis community transformation. Um, and it was again, the, a wall and a splash pad. So the city's new downtown Tamarack Village is being created to form a new sense of place and community gathering place. Public festivals, celebrations and events will take place at this location for people of all ages, giving this mural special visibility and significance. Um, there's a required deadline of one year for the grant. I included that just for ha-has because that one year uh, deadline came and went um, and no one seemed too bothered by that. Um, the budget for both projects is $150,000. And I found out um, after I was already working on it that I was to divide the money evenly between the two projects. Initially, there, were no, there was no information on dimensions. And if any of you have worked to budgets and worked with people before, um, that can be a red flag um, because if you're told that you're gonna get paid for paid a certain amount of money, but you don't know exactly what size a project is, there's wiggle room for how it's gonna play out. But the art consultants, George and Beth always assured me um, that whatever I say can be done for that amount of money, that's what we will do. Um, and as you can see from the last sentence, the mosaics have yet to be installed, even though everything is fabricated. Um, it's all still sitting in my studio. So um, the first step in taking on a project like this when you're actually getting into the nitty gritty is to brainstorm ideas. And so um, this image just shows a bunch of where, places my thoughts were going. Um, for example, in the upper left, hand corner, um, it's an old board game. And I thought it could, one possible concept for the splash pad could be to have it be like um, a board game where you kind of could kind of go around um, and hop around on the splash pad in that kind of, a, um, with that idea. And since the theme is metamorphosis, of course, I thought of butterflies. And then the upper right image is, that's the logo for Tamarack, which I considered using. Um, I included the Barack Obama because I really like the halftone look. And I was thinking of using that as my style for the, the amphitheater wall. I also wanted to include some nature imagery, whoops. And um, then finally, um, another thing I do when I, um, when I have a project like this is try and get a sense of what other people have done. Um, so I looked up back, um, like amphitheater wall artwork. And um, so I found this abstract piece, which I absolutely loved, but um, they, that was just not the, the direction that the committee was um, interested in. So my first concept designs for the amphitheater were to take images from their website of um, community members. And um, I found all kinds of great images and I was real excited about this idea. I got a go ahead. Um, another thing I do when, I, when I'm doing a, a public art project, I always like to start out by writing up what my ideas are rather than starting with sketches because I don't wanna put a lot of time into something if, it's, if I'm going down the whole wrong track. So I'll start out by, by writing and describing what I'm 
thinking. So that's what I did in this case. And I was encouraged by my art consultants that sounded great, go for it. So I put a lot of time into these um, sketches and this whole design idea of all of these people from the city um, and kind of done in half tones in the colors of um, the city logo. And then on the sides, the idea of the metamorphosis was gonna be transitioning from the retirement community to the vibrant multi-age, multicultural community that Tamarack has become. Um, I went to a few meetings down there and it really is a um, um, very successful, if I would say, um, uh, multicultural community and a lot of enthusiasm for what the city has going on. And um, I love where I live in Western Massachusetts in a small rural town, but I could see um, you know, the advantages of living in a place like that just for the diversity alone. So uh, again, so what happened with my first concept was, um, yes, my art consultants liked it, they loved it, um, but the committee who had to approve it did not. So I kind of had to go back to the drawing board. And the biggest thing that they said was that they wanted, um, they really wanted to see something that had to do with the theme of it being a um, um, amphitheater where there were gonna be programs and presentations. So. Um, Again, I did the same thing where I came up with um, an explanation. Um, I wrote down what I was thinking and how I was going to portray it as my first step, and that got approved. So then I started with um, this was my first design or one of the first designs that I sent to them that they liked. So it still has the transition of the nature on the sides, and then the center sen seven panels are kind of where all the um, action is happening in terms of what. Um, Tamarack is becoming. Next, it is, so I got the approval. The next thing to do is do full size sketches so that I would do the sketches and then bring them to Staples and get them um, printed to scale. And um, the way I work is on sticky mesh. Um, and so you can see the first panel there on the left Originally, to save money before I found out that the money was to be divided equally between the two projects, um, the, I was going to have the, all the edge end panels be narrower um, because I knew the splash pad was going to be, would take up more of the budget. Um, and then Beth said, no, 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 don't do that. We want this, to, this has to be spectacular. So just go for it, do them full size. So I just, luckily I could just easily add on um, to that panel. And you can see in the center panel here how this one already had the sticky paper on. You can also see some of the registration marks. You see panel one, each, each panel, and I'm calling them panels, all that, that's just because that's how I worked on them. There's gonna be an inch space between each one of these, but they are 45 inches wide and six feet high. And each one will be in six pieces um, for installation. So they're on sticky mesh, I laid the mosaic, put the sticky paper on top, um, and it's a big. It was a big roll, 54 inch wide roll of sticky paper, um, and then figured out my lines to cut it up, and then also drew registration marks, because even though you can see the whole design when you're doing um, put doing an install like that, the registration marks there. There are plenty of times when you can't tell if it is exactly lined up where um, you want it to be. Um, so above is kind of a uh, rough sketch. That's sort of how what it started out looking like. But the way I work when I'm um, working full size, I want my drawings to be perfect. So I'm never dinking around with any of the drawings. The color, I don't decide anything until I'm working on it. I had a, I had a, a sort of an idea of what I was going to do in terms of because I had to what I presented to them, but the specific colors when I'm working, uh, a lot of them I decide as I go along, um, keeping in mind what has come before. So um, the the images on the bottom um, kind of interesting. The the two musicians there, the guy with the microphone and the guy with the guitar. That's actually originally that was. Um, the band U2, Bono and The Edge, and I gave Bono a new head, and uh, as I and same thing with The Edge, which was um, kind of fun. But I came across an image that it was just a great. I love their their 
their positions. And so that's what I wanted to use. And I didn't use what they were wearing at all, um, but just the positions. Um, so here are the first three people um, mosaics. Or in the original design, the woman with the musical instrument, musical notes on top of her was gonna be to the left of the Lion King, but I realized um, that the color transition was better to go from the nature, um, which are more um, pastel kind of colors into the orange before the blue, I mean the blue of the, uh, the Lion King before um, her bright oranges. Um, and a few more details on, in terms of how I go from um, my source material to the final drawings. Um, I, the, this dancer woman was originally a silhouette and really small. So I had to enlarge that. And then to, to, to get her to be realistic looking, I found um, this image of the, um, the photograph of the model there, beautiful model with the right hairstyle. And then the upper right hand corner image is um, using Photoshop, I made it into a half tone so that I could pay attention to the, the values in the, the skin tones. And then the hands, I needed more definition. So I did a lot of research finding um, good hands to use and refer to. So here are my guys. Um, the uh, Bono's head is actually um, um, Don McLean back when he was a youngster. And then um, the moving on, so I have the dancer there. And um, starting the last three of the nature pieces, I decided to do the great blue heron in um, broken pottery, um, uh, blue willow mostly, just to mix it up. And then there's the last panel. And then there is what all of the, um, there are 13, um, parts of the mural altogether. So it ends up measuring about 50 feet wide and um, six feet high. And so again, this is all in my studio right now, um, all stacked up in um, six pieces per panel, um, ready to be shipped down to Florida. I found a guy who's gonna help me with the installation. Um, because it's just too much to be in charge of to do all of it. Um, I know how to do an installation like that all by myself um, and just have a helper with me. But I realize it's much better to have someone doing the troweling and then I'm helping position everything. And I'm hoping that he'll have another helper to do um, assist with grouting and um, just keep the whole project moving along. Uh, and then here are some some of the um, drawings and yeah drawings of how where the um, mosaic's going to be. It's on an elevated platform and um, and it's actually really close to the where the splash pad will be. So I think that's it for the amphitheater. Any questions? I have there one. Any oh yeah, go ahead. Um, hi, this is Susan. Um, this is this is so great, Cindy. Um, so I have a couple of technical questions, and maybe they're too technical. I don't really know, but um, in one case, uh, early on, you you showed what you said was your sticky mesh, and then mosaic on it. But I got a little confused about when you were using. Um, actual mosaics and when you were using, if you were using cut out paper to start to, uh, were you going oh, right oh, to oh, mosaic? Um, so I had um, on my work table would be a six foot by nine foot line drawing, um, okay. say of the, the um, hip hop dancer. Um, so, um, so just the line drawing is on the page. Then I put sticky mesh on the whole top of that. And then um, I usually started with the figure and just started laying the mosaic. And I used a lot of stained glass as well as some smaller pieces um, and vitreous glass and um, um, mosaic glass. And then when the whole thing was done, I put sticky paper on the top um, and a, a real, a good, a pretty heavy duty sticky paper since it has to be lifted up. Um, 
And um, and then when the sticky paper's on the top, I tried to remember to take a picture or before that step. And then, and then I cut it, um, then I decided where my lines were to easily divide it into um, pretty much even um, shaped pieces and not have like go right through the middle of someone's face. And then, um, then I'd cut those with a knife. So I had to go through the top sticky through the mesh and ended up with six separate sections, which I flipped over. And um, I learned that it's better to not leave the mesh on. And whenever you do a project like this, you always want to leave it face down so that while you're waiting, the gravity is doing its thing and your mosaic is sitting on the, the sticky side, not kind of, um, if it weren't flipped over, it would be suspended kind of from its sticky, but you always want the sticky to work with you. And I learned that the hard way from, a, I had a project that sat for many months and when I got to install it, um, because it was right side up, it, things didn't go so smoothly. So if they're upside down, it's just a better way to do it. Does that answer your question? Yes, you answered several follow-up questions too, but one you didn't quite deal with was why do you not want to leave the mesh on? Does it just get, does it break down? No, it's just not necessary. And um, if there, um, sometimes the mesh can get in the way of, you, you need to use a little bit more thin set when the mesh stays on. Mm. And just because there are times when the mesh, um, it, it's amazing. It seems like you have plenty of thin set down, but if the, if there, there are times I've experienced where the, the thin set doesn't go all the way through the layer of the mesh. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, so we have a couple more questions coming in. Okay. Beth is wondering what's the actual sticky paper and where is it from? Um, this, uh, who, who's asking that? Beth Klinger. Okay, Beth, um, I'm, I'm happy to send anybody if they want the information. Um, I did a lot of hunting to find this sticky paper and um, it comes, I got it from a place where I had to order a lot. Um, and I, and I got it on 50, like I said, like 53 or 54 inches wide, but, um, it's, I'd have to, I'd have to look it up and send it to you. Um, I know the place to find out too. So maybe when you yeah. send it, you can send yeah. it to Amy. Yeah, I'll, or I'll somehow out. send it to some, the NEMS list. Cause it's, um, yeah. it's great stuff. I don't, um, it's so strong that um, I still love my frosty contact paper because there are times when I want to be able to remove it right away. Um, but the, for like for the splash pad in particular, it has to be just um, bomb proof sticky paper since it's what I'm asking of it. And it's, and it's great stuff. I mean, and since it, I, it, sorry, um, just to clarify, it works the same way that a tile tape would, right? So you put it, is, it on it, the it is tile tape. It's just that it's wider. And so, uh -huh. so like I, I started out using this 54 inch roll and um, my husband was my helper. And there were many times when the paper would get stuck on itself and it was um, bad. And finally I realized, you know what? Cut the roll in half. So mm -hmm. having it be like 20 whatever inches wide was much more manageable and we're still married. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Cindy, uh -huh. why don't you send the information to me because I'm gonna okay. be I'm sending out the link and I can include that in the email. Okay, I will do that. Um, and we have another question that came in from Carol Kretzman. Um, she's wondering what kind of tiles you used. Um, I used a, um, predominantly stained glass. And actually, since you asked, um, there were no, some of the colors, um, if you guys know, you can't really get that fuchsia magenta color is really hard to come by. So what I did was I got a bunch of clear glass that has patterning in it. And I spray painted the back with the kind of spray paint that is, um, won't fade. And I put double coats on everything and I've used it a number of times. And it's a great solution to getting colors that you can't get in glass. Smart. Thanks. I don't okay. see any other questions right now. Okay, let me move on. Okay, so going on to the splash pad. So again, going back to my budget, um, I knew that, so now my budget is $75,000 and I knew that that was not enough for a splash pad project. Um, and, and I had told the art consultants that I was working with from the get-go that I didn't want to have to be in charge of the install 
in in my part of the budget and um but they insisted that's the way the city wanted to do it so that is the contract i signed and that is an issue that i am dealing with today still uh the installation and it's kind of a nightmare that's the be careful of what you wish for these big projects um so this is all based on kids drawings um i had gone down to tamarack several times and did community um outreach to try and get people's ideas of what they wanted in the um, both the mural wall and also the splash pad. So I met with some kids and in about 15 minutes, they came up with the theme of the, the splash pad. If any of you guys work, do school projects with kids, um, ideally you get people to put invest a little more time than just kind of <laughs> scribbling something and that becomes the artwork, but that's what I had to work with. And um, unfortunately, I really wanted to include some of the things they wrote because to me the, those were those were even better than the drawings. Um, they were so I just love them. When you try your best, um, you will succeed. I heart playing baseball in the park. Um, fun has begun was my total favorite, and I thought fun has begun would have been the, just the best, and that's what the mosaic should be called. Fun has begun, and then the the best friends. Um, so anyway, they they encouraged me to. Um, gussy up the drawing. So if you look at the soccer girl there and the boy fishing and my soccer girl and boy fishing, I used to be a children's book illustrator. So I used my skills to um, give them a little bit fancier drawings. But if you see the baseball players, they do are much truer to the way the kids drew them as are those big um, doll girls and the um, other little girl there. Um, this is my palette. Um, this is all the uh, splash pad um, is done with keystone porcelain one inch mosaics. And these are, um, they're great solid body porcelain, same on both sides. Um, and for this project, I ordered everything sheeted up because um, one of the things about this mural, um, the mayor, um, I'll tell you about the mayor. The mayor visited the Deerfield Beach splash pad and she didn't like it. And I was like astounded to hear she didn't like it, but she thought it was way too busy and wanted a lot more empty space, which for me and worrying about my budget really paid off because these giant areas in the background, they didn't want lots of stuff in there. So I used sheeted up tile and it, um, it definitely made it go faster. Um, so I wrote over there on the side, no pink. So this mayor called a meeting with me on Zoom and one of the art consultants because she had to let me know that this is really not her color scheme. And she liked all everything that I was doing, but why isn't there any pink? Or why isn't there any fuchsia? And um, I was kind of nonplussed. It's like, um, well, maybe you can say you want to live on Mars, but you just can't do it. And it's like, there's no such thing as pink in this, this kind of tile. And it was the weirdest thing because this woman's the mayor and I'm having this conversation that I, I just didn't understand, you know, how do we move forward here? Because you can't do anything. And by the end of it, my face was the color of a tomato and I was um, pretty worked up and trying to not be, but um, she ended up by just saying, well, um, I just had to let you know. Um, I just wanted you, to let, want, wanted you to know this is really not my color scheme. So interesting what you come across. Um, another thing about this splash pad project was that this was a huge thing to do in a studio. Um, again, I, I decided that this was going to be the, the most, the, Splash pad was 36 feet in diameter, and I designed it so that it'll have a, a foot border around the whole outside edge that will be put on on site. So I had um, 17 feet of table space that I um, could work on. I had to make special tables for it. But before I got to that part, um, I needed a template to put everything on. So I decided, um, and it, it took me quite a while to figure out the best way to approach um, constructing it. Um, and it's too much to go into detail, but there's, you would not believe how many factors you have to take into account. Um, so originally I was thinking of using like that pink um, rosin paper. Um, and if any of you are familiar with it, it's a building paper, but it's, and it comes in long rolls, but it's really not that sturdy. And so then I thought, 
how about Tyvek? And then I found out Tyvek comes in nine feet wide. So that was fantastic because just the, just by having to put through three foot pieces rolled out and taped together, it's just, you're asking for things to go off. So this way I only had one long seam to deal with. Um, and so what I'm standing on in my studio is the, the whole template folded over. And I love that image on the right, just because it kind of shows the, the craziness of what it really is size wise. Um, so then I marked the whole template out and I actually used the template for all four quadrants because the template is 17 feet long and 17 feet high. So as you can see I, in my studio, which is 12 feet wide um, by 24 feet long, um, plus counter space. Um, I didn't have enough space to really spread it out, but I had already marked off the template with um, lines showing where the colors of the background change. I mean, each pie slice, so to speak, and um, then where the, the animals and everything was gonna go on it. And then I just taped them down. And then on the right, you can see more of, um, I also had included the lines so I would know I was on target. But even just the stage of setting it up and putting the drawings on the paper was is, is just so complicated. And it was all coming from the, the star, um, the center motif. Um, so now you're seeing the first um, row one, quadrant one um, of the splash pad um, completed. And so the next step was to put sticky paper on it. And so right now the rest of the template is rolled up on the top. Um, so here you can see, you can see a little bit of the shine of the sticky paper. So I marked everything with the number um, in the, and then I, all of the registration marks. And ideally in a mosaic like this, when you're piecing everything together, you really want more straight lines than not. But the way everything worked out, we have so many zigzaggy lines. So it will fit perfectly or it won't fit um, to be discovered. So, okay, so, so I finished that whole first row, put sticky paper on the whole thing, marked it up, <clears throat> cut it up. And then you always have to leave a section that is gonna continue um, because you need to know um, it, everything has to be contiguous. So you have to leave. So like, the, so my table is um, over four feet wide. So I can only cut out like three and a half feet or so of height um, so that I still left that foot. So the next step is to slide that whole thing to the other end of the table and get rid of the original um, piece of the, the, the template. So this image on the right is looking at the other end of um, what the image on the left and so now it's down on the, the close end of the table. My next step would be to put the mesh over like the girl in number 23 and then continue laying tile. Um, this continue. So one of the things I discovered is that um, it in something this size, it doesn't really pay to get fancy with your tile shapes. Um, on the cat, I decided to put have it be kind of more crazy quilt. And it just, for the amount of extra work that it took, um, it really didn't, I didn't feel like it's doing anything for um, artistically for in this um, particular project. Normally using whole tile is really boring and you never wanna do it. But when you're working at this scale, it, that's not, it's not about nice um, mosaic cutting technique or shapes in that way. For, for this particular project. Um, and then, so then I would, I would cut the pieces, um, flip them over, took the mesh off. I ended up realizing I could reuse the mesh. So a lot of those pieces, I figured out a way to cut it so I didn't cut through it entirely. And I used the mesh over and over, which was really nice because it's, um, it's kind of environmentally, you just throw it out. So it was, I felt really good to be able to use it more than once. So another thing that was a design consideration when <clears throat> doing the project was I had to cut everything up to fit on pallets to be shipped down. So that is why everything is the dimensions that they are. Um, and there's my little girl, um, fun has begun. 
Um, I ended up adding a few things like the sun, a ki another kid had drawn a sun and I, sometimes I was running out of tile color. So it was just a way of stretching the background color. So as the winter went on, um, I, one time I went to a friend's house to lay out like, I, so I finished the whole first quadrant and then had quadrant two, three and four to do. So I ended up doing some of them in my driveway. Um, you can see the, kind of see the outside dimension of the, um, the Tyvek, um, but that's the only place that was big enough. Um, Cause I don't know about you guys, but 17 by 17 feet is not like most of us have that kind of floor space empty. Um, so I, and then I use the tiles just to weight them down so they don't blow away. But I, <clears throat> the, I learned by the end of it all, I was just taping down, I was just tracing the actual um, drawings so that I didn't have to put them down until I was ready for them because they got kind of bunched up whenever I had to roll the whole thing up. But this just shows another part of the process where I'm working on like the middle piece of the Tyvek. Um, and then that's, so that's what the tile looks like when I get it sheeted up like that. And I bought it by boxes in boxes. Um, luckily you I could buy like um, 35 sheets of orange, 22 sh sheets of purple. I didn't, I wasn't compelled to buy the way um, like an entire case or whatever. But the mosaic was really stacking up and it ended up being on three pallets finally. Oh, I included this image just because it says last, last. <laughs> finally, um, I have to say I was pretty into this project until um, maybe this last row and a half. And then I was just sick to death of it and I just wanted to finish. So um, this is a project that doesn't want to finish, does not want to end. Um, one of the things I realized I needed to do was go through the whole stack of each section and cut off the little nibs. Um, like I said, the tile came sheeted up and I figured that it'd be much better to not have those nibs sticking out when I go to re put everything together. Um, just because if you get to a nib to bump the wrong way, it could set off um, how it re comes together. And once, if, if you guys have ever done a mosaic like this, the more, once they start going off, they just go off and further off and further off. So it's kind of, um, you wanna avoid that as much as you can. Um, so there I am moving them around in the barn part of my studio. And my lovely husband was helping. We borrowed a, um, a what is those thing? A forklift pump pallet lift. pallet lift and had a lot of fun with that thing, moving um, the pallets around, but they are wicked heavy and there's absolutely no way you could do it other than that. I could actually lift a sheet of um, the three and a half by four feet. I can pick that up by myself, um, but it's, heavy. Uh, so anyway, um, we covered them. I mean, I covered them up with the boxes and they are all ready to go down there. Um, and so these are just, I had to draw out for the architect um, how the mosaic is going to be cut up into sections. And um, that's kind of where we're at with it all. I'm working with, a, I need to get another architect or engineer to sign off on how it's all going to come together and hoping to do the install in, um, I um, think April, mid-April, late April. Um, it is definitely held up by, because of COVID, um, but I'm gonna go down for both projects, I think at the same time. And, um, and then this is just the map that shows like where all of the holes, the jets are, because I did not cut out any of the jets yet. So that's something I'll have to do on site. So there's still, a lot to do on this project, but for the most part, it won't be done, it won't happen until I'm down there. And that is my presentation. So. Um, Thanks. Yay. Um, so who has questions? I don't see, we got a lot of wows and so cools in the chat. I don't know if you're looking, Cynthia, but um, I, it, Now's the time. You can ask your questions out loud or in the chat. Well, you all think I have, uh, I, I'm so intimidated and confused by how pallets get moved. Can you tell me about that? <laughs> sure. Um, it's, it's, it's a good question. And it's something that um, you need to have one of those Jack things a pump jacky thing. And it's, it, it's kind of cool. Cause it goes, you, 
you have to, one thing about using one of those things is you have to be really forceful and, and like you have to shove it in. And if you don't shove it, it's not going to happen. Um, cause we were trying when we were first working with it, we weren't rough enough with it and realized no, that you just have to manhandle it. Um, but then you, you put it in, you jack it up a little bit and then it will just move. They're incredible. The amount of weight that they can pick up. Um, but when the, a truck will come to my house and, um, and back right in. And then he, the last time I, I did the splash pad for Lauder Hill, they picked, um, I was only on one um, pallet and he had a pump jack thing. And then he had a lift on the back of his truck because like they need, you know, it's not something that I could move without all of those kind of, um, that kind of equipment. It's a big deal. And so they put the pallet, they, they, they jack it, goes, it up and then put goes, the pallet onto the, pallet. the truck. But it goes not, the, yeah, no, it goes yeah. into the pallet, yep. but then it lifts the entire pallet with your stuff on it, drops that on the truck. And then does it get um, contained in some way? No, no or, that's a good question too. What the way it works, I learned all this when I sent, shipped that one. Um, they, if you don't want anything stacked on top of your, your load, you put these little triangle things so that nothing can, um, it's just to prevent, let them know, like, do not put anything here. Um, because basically a lot of trucks, at least if they're like the truck that came to my house, don't have a whole, they're not jam packed. It's not like they're going floor to ceiling. Cause, um, another thing, when you figure out freight, you have to find out what the weight of your material is and, um, then, and then say, okay, it's six inches high and it's this dimension. And they give you a price based on all that. So it's, um, it's pretty in, inexact kind of way of going about it, but that's how it's done. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks. All right. So we've got some questions. Anne's wondering, how do you actually cut the tiled sections? And the, it, yeah, go ahead. Um, the, the, the intersections. Yeah. Are you wondering, Anne, how, how you cut it into pieces? Yeah. Into the, yeah how do you cut through the, I'm thinking that if it's not, if it's an irregular drawing or like how you it's it's you just use, um a um uh not exacto knife the little um uh, like a box cutter box cutter yeah. yeah so you just go through between each um tile and then you're cutting like those nibs at the same time so you're cutting sticky paper nibs and then mesh down below okay it's tedious yeah thanks <laughs> yeah um and so um carol Sorry, everything's moving. Um, so Carol's wondering when you go down to do the install, do you have to add a border then? Yes. Yeah. And and there's going to be, um, I know for a fact that there's things are going to go off. And I keep on telling myself on my sleepless nights how it's going to work out. It has to work out. It will work <laughs> out. And it will because it has to. Um, so there, there's no question that things will go off. Um, like when I did the great blue heron, I decided to, um, I had laid, done the whole thing on my table. And at the end, I decided to take the table down, which was a big deal, get it out of the way and dry lay it on my floor just to see how it all came together. Cause I never saw it all in one piece, nine feet wide, 15 feet high. And it went beautifully except for the last piece. And it went off by maybe an eighth of an inch um, for six inches or so. So that is inevitably gonna happen. And it's gonna just be put stuff down, put the next pieces down. And if it goes off, figure out, okay, either add tiles here, take them away here, or, oh, wow, there's a whole, it's missing a whole row up there. So I'll buy, I'm gonna buy extra colors and have them there to use and um, add. And I might do the whole thing before the install crew comes try dry laying it and cut out all of the, the spout holes. So that's gonna, that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be intense until I really, you know, until it really um, sinks in that it's working. <laughs> Definitely. Um, all right, so Rhonda's wondering why, um, why you selected the Keystone color body porcelain tile, whether she's wondering whether you thought about other tiles before that and- Yeah. Um, on the topic of tiles, Jamie's also wondering how thick it is in millimeters. It, um, I'm not sure. Well, let's see, is it six millimeters, maybe? Um, it's it's equivalent of a skinny quarter inch, 
I don't, I don't think it's as thick as a quarter inch, but so it cuts really, um, I use wheeled nippers for the most part. Um, sometimes I use like the side biters and it's, and the reason I use that is because it's not slippery because the splash pads wet all the time. So they actually sell dowel tile keystones um, that is slip resistant. And um, I talked to a representative and they said, you do not want to use that kind because it's too abrasive if kids mm -hmm. are running around on it barefoot. So between the, because it's only an inch big at the, at the largest and plenty of cut tiles too, um, there lot, the grout joints will also be the slip proof it will um, help with that. But there are not a lot of choices out there anymore um, because there used to be Olean, something bought out, Dial Tile bought out the competition. And so now it's the one company. And that was another thing because of COVID for a while there, the everything was back ordered and it took a, um, took a while for some of the colors to come in. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Um, all right, so Carol's wondering, how did you make sure everything lays flat? Carol, do you, do you, can you explain a little bit? Do you mean on the pallets? Do you mean when she's laying on the sticky mesh or some other point? I think you, mm -mm, I don't hear you, even though you unmuted. Do other people hear her? No. No, she, okay. it actually shows that she's muted. She's muted. Oh, 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 unmute yourself. Here, I'll ask to unmute you. There we go, I got it, thanks. Okay. I was just curious, since people will be walking and running around on it, how do you make sure that um, everything is flat and there's you know, not anything that someone could little trip over, a little toes trip over? Uh, well, that is incredibly important that, that, that it be that way. I hire experts. I will not be using a trowel myself at mm -hmm. all. And I, I mean, I don't have the skill to do that because it has to be completely perfect. So I'm hiring, a, a, I will hire a probably pool company that will do the install. And um, the only reason it would be bumpy would be if there was something on the concrete, whoever laid the concrete that left some, uh, some kind of a bump. But that's, that's something that they, the specs, um, I mean, they're really, really particular that all of the specs are followed exactly and that they, understand everything and everybody's on the same page with regard to all that kind of stuff. And I mean, like, I mean, I was there for the one in Lauder Hill for that installation and it's, um, you know, the, the, it, you just have to have really good clean concrete to put it on. And then it's just okay. the inset. So, um, so that, that leads to another of the questions. I'm not going in order, so don't worry. I didn't skip you on purpose. I'll go back to the ones we missed, but um, Beth's wondering, can you talk us through how you actually install the pieces? I think that'll also get at some of Carol's questions. Okay. And I'm gonna so, throw in here just a second. Hi, Cindy. Hi. I thought you actually did the installation. So you hire experts to do oh, it. Yes, yeah, Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, that, no, that clarifies is, a lot. Yeah, this is way too mega of a project. In fact, the, the architects wanted to know why isn't she doing in the installation? And luckily my art consultants knew enough to say, they're two different animals. You know, I'm a mosaic artist. I can do the design work that a tile installer can't do, but I can, I'm not up for doing the install. I know how technically, but I'm not, there's no way I would take that on. Um, just because you have to be precise with the, the how you lay thin set. And I've been doing this for 22 years. And there are times when it's a little thin over there, it's a little thick over there, and you can't have that happen in a project like this. So, but so what I envision the way it'll go would be, will be, we'll be down there. We'll have the pallets, the three pallets sitting there. I'll need to have the pump jack. Um, not, it's not called that, but the, whatever pallet thing there and, and to be able to pull them around and then find row one, quad one, and just lay them out. Find, figure out where the, like, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to locate where all of the water spouts are. So I'm, I'm already have packaged up my whole template. If need be, I could transfer everything onto the template like just line, um, use a magic marker and draw right on the template where all of those water spouts are, then lay the mosaic out, know that everything is fitting, and then then mark where the, um, the water jets need to be cut out. Um, so basically it's gonna have to be dry laid entirely 
That's what I think should happen. Dry lay the whole thing out to know that it's going to fit well. Um, and because the same, besides everything fitting in terms of the pieces side by side, that last foot border, um, my template, I'm not sure that it was 100% perfect for the, the, the actual last row of tile. So I know I'm going to have to be um, adding pieces there following that angle on the outside of the circle. Um, when I got this job, I, I really tried to convince them to not have it be circular. Um, but the person in charge was just like, no, it has to be a circle. Um, <laughs> Can I add one, one more question to that, Cindy? So when you're doing the dry layout, you just have the sticky paper on top. The mesh is no longer on the, the bottom, right? On. Yeah, yeah. And the sticky paper is sticky enough to hold that tile for you to move it around. It is. Um, and actually, again, when um, I have always treated anything with sticky paper with kid gloves and you know, never hold it upright any more than you have to. That Lauder Hill job, I saw the guys arrive with all of the stack of the tiles. They did not have any kid gloves on. And they were like, just like folding them up and passing them over the truck edge. And, and it was, I didn't have a piece come out. I mean, it, it's just the, the sticky paper is phenomenal. Thank God. That's great to know. Um, so Rhonda has a question that I also was wondering about, which is when everything's done, will you have made the profit margin that you expected on the project? Um, that's a great question. And um, the answer is yes. Um, I work really fast. I did, I did the laying, I, this was something I had said to NEMS two years ago that I would love to have people come over and work on it. And then COVID happened and so it never happened. So I ended up doing every single piece myself. And, um, and I'm really, really big on trying to make sure that I earn what I wanna earn. So, um, so like the fact that it cost $75,000 to do this, I kind of padded stuff out knowing that there could be unexpected costs along the way or, um, and I don't even know my full costs. I don't know how much time I'm gonna be down in Florida but I still feel good about um, the, the money. one bummer thing is though, the way they pay you, I got my first advance. Um, I mean, the first check that they cut is for um, like a third uh, or less than a third. Um, and they gave it to me in like December, no, January of 2019. And I didn't do anything for a long time. And man, that money was nowhere to be found when it came time to, okay, buying tile time. So that was really a bummer. I mean, and now like I, because it's stretched out so long um, for tax purposes, I earned a big, I got a big check this year from this project mm -hmm. and my expenses were not that big because I bought the tile last year and the, and the, um, and all of the expenses of the install are not going to be till 2022. So that really is a bummer, but, um, but at the end of the day, I think I'm going to do okay. Mm. Thanks and, for sharing all those details. Yeah. Did Rhonda ask that question? Yes. Okay. Rhonda is a much better profit margin than the, than our tower, the, our, um, columns we did. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, um, let's see, what if we got, so everyone's impressed. Um, Lisa's wondering um, how you're feeling about taking on something of this scale again. That is a good question. Um, this has been really, really hard mentally. Um, I got an email from the architect yesterday that um, oh, just, it, it's just, I find it really easy to get um, uh, worried about how it's all gonna come out. And, um, and it's been, um, that side of it is just really, um, it's just been really challenging. And I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure that I'd do something this big again, or, or I'd want to, ha to have more, uh, like know that I'm not gonna be doing something round or just kind of have more control of, um, what I'm signing up for, because, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are getting really close to eight o'clock. I don't mind staying for a couple more minutes, but there are, let's see if we can get through these last couple questions quickly. Sure. Um, so Susan, this might be a bigger answer than we have time for, but um, 
Cynthia, she's wondering how do you design specific parts of the piece, like the heron, when you enlarge something that looks good, tiny, it might look really different when it's big. Um, actually, I don't really agree with that because if it looks good, small, really tight and small, it should look good, big and vice versa. I mean, and, and it works almost more the other way. If it's big, if it's when you have it big and then you make it small yeah. and it still looks good for me, that's a test always of, of artwork that make it really small and see what you see, what it looks like. But I've been doing this a long time and, um, I feel like I was born to make mosaics. So for me, that part is that's the fun, easy. I mean, working on that amphitheater was a joy. <laughs> Pretty different from the the splash pad, which I got into, but the but just totally different because it really was kind of more art um, mm -hmm. as compared to just um, doing it for the mm -hmm. splash pad. Yeah. Um, all right, Rhonda's wondering how many days do you think the installation will take? Do you have an estimate? Um, I have told them that I think that the amphitheater should be five days um, start to finish and, and possibly a little less, especially if we got help. I mean, the, the drag thing about the amphitheater is grout is that I'm going to have to be part of the grouting and I'm not thrilled with that. Um, that's going to be a pain in the neck. Um, and whereas for the splash pad, I I'm going to be there to help oversee it and be there for anything they need, but I do not need to be there for grouting. Um, so yeah, um, but I think, and I think that one, my guess is it would take four days to do the dry lay. Um, and I'm not sure I may get, try and get my husband to come down and help me with that. Just because, Frank, I mean, I just started talking about it with him. It, for me, it's the mental part of it is, it's just so incredibly stressful. And he is my boon companion, and it would really makes me feel better when he helps on stuff. Um, he's great at installations, um, so I think, and I think that actual installation by the the crew will could be because he they had the, the crew I worked with last time had like five guys, so it took um, uh, it was a, it was like not even a full day to do that the one with the great blue heron. Um, so, but I still think it could take like a, a week to do the laying and then and i'm not sure about the grouting yeah hmm. um okay so deborah kramer is actually is asking whether you're worried that because the okay so when you have already put everything in place are you worried about tiles coming off when you remove the sticky paper no no because this this it's super st sticky strong sticky which it has to be for this project but you just can't even try to lift it until the thin set is rock hard and mm -hmm. that is why another reason why I would not want to do the troweling because if you put too much or or you know you did something wrong and you have to move it and then you and you can't remove the sticky paper um it's a pain in the neck yeah okay and um Jamie I don't know if we already touched on this talking about the friction but the, the question Cynthia is how much friction on the tile surface is there so that kids don't slip you talked about not using the super abrasive one. Yeah, uh, um, I, I, I don't know. All I know is that that's, it's a material that is recommended. It's the Deerfield Beach. It's both of the splash fez I did. We use that material and it's um, kind of um, a standard in the industry. Yep. Well, I'm sure we could come up with more questions for you if we had more time, but um, I really, really appreciate you sharing your process and your photos and your expertise with all of us. Um, Amy, I don't know if you want to do any official closeout. Yeah, I, I, I think everyone was really engaged. Um, it was very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take bye. care. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Emily. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks, Cindy. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you.